This copyrighted video was produced by the California Department of Rehabilitation and is intended solely for educational purposes. Welcome back to Employment Today. Our guest, disability expert Ed Flores, is going to answer some of your questions about undue hardship when reasonable accommodation is not required. But first, our field reporter correspondent visited a number of small businesses to gather some of your questions on this important topic. California's Fair Employment and Housing Act, or FEHA as it is generally called, requires employers with five or more employees to provide reasonable accommodation to qualified applicants or employees with disabilities, unless doing so would cause an undue hardship. Examples of reasonable accommodation might be such things as purchasing special equipment to enhance an employee's productivity, providing a flexible working schedule or an extended leave of absence to an employee recovering from cancer. The determination of undue hardship is an individualized case-by-case -case assessment based on the unique circumstances of the job applicant or employee, the net cost to the employer, and the situation at hand, including such factors as the nature and cost of the accommodation needed, financial resources of the employer, the number of persons employed, the type of operation of the employer, the effect on expenses, operation and resources of the business, tax incentives, and or financial assistance from outside agencies. An employer cannot claim undue hardship based on other employees or customers' morale, fears, and prejudices toward the individual's disability. Because this is such a gray area, we visited three small business owners to see if they had any questions for our reasonable accommodation expert. I operate a supply company and have 10 full-time and 10 part-time employees working for me in my retail store. Some work in the store while others do deliveries. I only have one certified forklift operator. He's been out for the last two months recovering from back surgery. And now he wants to return to work on a part-time basis for a few months while he fully recovers. We've already fallen behind in completing certain projects due to his absence. No one else carries this certification and we're never going to keep up with deadlines if he can only work part-time. Do I have to accommodate this request, even though it may negatively affect my business? What are my options? Wow, great question. Ed, how would you answer that? Scheduled modifications are a common solution for a reasonable accommodation request. A modified schedule may involve adjusting arrival and departure times, providing periodic breaks, altering when certain functions are performed, allowing an individual to use accrued paid leave or by providing additional unpaid leave. In most cases, it may not be a problem for an employer to provide a modified or part-time schedule for an employee, even if it doesn't provide such schedules for other employees. Mm. But in other cases such as yours, providing this might not be practical considering the specialty certification and the essential functions in your company. Since your employee is the only one certified to provide the essential functions for your business, this may be an undue hardship if you are not able to create a reasonable solution and his absence would prevent uh, your company's ability to function. Mm. However, if you are able to temporarily reassign other marginal functions during that time period so that he may focus on that particular function, this may be a way to accommodate his request. Unless, of course, this would put too much responsibility on the other employees. Well, it sounds like the business owner should go back and look at everyone's duty statement to see if they can temporarily reassign marginal job functions to accommodate his request while still meeting their deadlines. Exactly. Let's hear our second small business owner's question. I just opened a very small business and have extremely limited financial resources. I have yet to earn a profit and all of my money goes into improving my business. One of my employees has a bad knee and finds it painful to stand on hard concretes for extended periods of time. I purchased extra cushion mats to help accommodate her disability. Now she's requesting an ergonomic chair that I would have to custom order due to the height of our counters. If I have already provided this employee with one reasonable accommodation, do I have to provide additional accommodations for this employee? All right, Ed, what should he do in this situation? Well, the duty to provide reasonable accommodation is ongoing. As the employer, you must consider each request for reasonable accommodation and determine, one, whether the accommodation is needed, 
Two, if needed, whether the accommodation would be effective. And three, if effective, whether providing the reasonable accommodation would impose an undue hardship. If the first reasonable solution you try turns out to be ineffective, and the employee with a disability remains unable to perform the essential functions, then you must consider whether another reasonable accommodation might work, unless you can demonstrate that you lack the financial means to fulfill this obligation. If those options don't work, maybe you could allow her more breaks to rest or a regular chair to use when not at the counter. In your case, if you already paid for and provided agreed upon solution and can't afford another, you could start by contacting local disability groups or agencies such as the Department of Rehabilitation to see if they could provide financial assistance. Oh, sounds like there's a lot of possible solutions that could help prevent claiming undue hardship. Seems like the employer should fully explore alternatives with the employee. Let's move on to our third business owner and their question on undue hardship. I own a small ice cream parlor that's frequented by families and children. One of my employees has a personality disorder. Some days she's as sweet and helpful as can be, and other days she's rude and short with my customers. When I try to talk to her about it or discipline her, she informs me again that she cannot always control her moods. I've received several complaints and can't take the risk of permanently alienating customers if she has a bad day. What can I do? Well, Ed, how should our business owner handle this one? Well, this is a tricky one. You want to accommodate your employee. You also have a right to enforce standards of behavior that are job related and consistent with business necessity. An undue hardship can be claimed when a reasonable accommodation would impact the operation of the business. There are a few ways you could attempt to accommodate your employee so long as it does not cause a hardship or interrupt the functions of the workplace. First, if you have enough staff willing and are able to cover your employee's hours, you could provide the employee with some time off to seek medical treatment to help correct the issue. Another form of accommodation might be to shift duties on a bad day to avoid customer interactions. This would only work if there was such a position and your employee was qualified to perform those essential functions. You are not required to create a new position to accommodate an employee. Last, discipline should be consistent by position regardless of whether your employee has a disability. If an employee with a disability violates a company policy or safety rule, they can be disciplined for that action and terminated after, ex after an excess of warnings. Try reviewing your store policies at an all staff meeting and remind employees what disciplinary action will be taken if rules are not followed. Be careful not to single out anyone and to treat all employees the same regardless of their disability status. Otherwise, this could lead to a discrimination lawsuit. Well, those were all great questions and I hope we were able to assist our business owners in understanding what constitutes an undue hardship. Before we finish up, Ed, can you leave us with a few helpful tips? Be happy to, Will. Before denying accommodation request, you must consider the following factors because this is what investigators will consider if a complaint is ever filed. Did the applicant or employee demonstrate that they had a qualifying disability that limited one or more major life activities? Did the applicant or employee sufficiently communicate the need for an accommodation to the employer or did the employer acknowledge this request? Did the employer respond to the request in a timely, interactive, and good faith manner by discussing and exploring various alternatives before arriving at a final solution? What accommodations did the employer initiate and implement? If the employer claimed undue hardship as the basis for denying the accommodation, what evidence did they gather to demonstrate this accommodation would entail a significant expense or disrupt business operation? Prior to or denying the accommodation, did the employer fully explore other alternatives or seek assistance from outside professionals or accommodation specialists, such as the Job Accommodation Network, also known as JAN? Now, what can our viewers do if they need more information on employer responsibilities in this area? Well, the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing has a wonderful website at www.dfeh ca.gov and Jan's website is www.askjan.org. I highly recommend them. Ed, thank you so much for being here and answering our questions on this sensitive topic. Let's give a nice round of applause for today's guest, disability expert, Ed Flores.